The protest first spiraled out of control over the weekend. Most of those injured were policemen diagnosed with uh, head injuries, stab wounds and poisoning. But the U.S. and EU justified the unrest by saying it was provoked by the Ukrainian authorities. And for more, we're now joined live by John Lockland, author on international affairs. Uh, Mr. Lockland, welcome to RT. So far-right activists are becoming more and more vocal in Ukraine and are central in to the violence we're witnessing in Kiev nowadays. Why do you think that is? Well, in a sense, I think that the opposition in Kiev, the, pro the so-called pro-European opposition, has violence in its DNA. What I mean by that is that, uh, as we know, <clears throat> the uh, pro-European demonstrations are being led uh, by two political parties, by Svoboda and by Vitaly Klitschko's party, Udar. Uh, Udar, of course, means a hit, and Klitschko is uh, primarily known as a boxer. In other words, the very name of his party uh, encapsulates and expresses uh, a notion of violence, a notion of aggressive violence. As for Svoboda, uh, as I'm sure your viewers know, Svoboda is, at the European level, affiliated with various extreme right and neo-fascist political parties like Jobbik in Hungary, the Fiamma Tricolore in Italy and the Front National in France. These parties uh, are always attacked by the European elites as being anti-democratic, anti-European uh, parties who, uh, should, whose role should be reduced to the minimum. And it's an indication of the incredible hypocrisy of Western elites that one of their members, the Svoboda Party, should instead now be being regarded as a pro-Western and pro-democratic force. Uh, but Washington and Brussels blame uh, the Ukrainian authorities for the clashes and the unrest. How reasonable is that? <clears throat> it's totally unreasonable. No state in the world, no self-respecting state in the world, would allow people to set up permanent barricades in the central square of the capital city. Uh, there are many examples of democratic states dismantling such barricades. In Paris in 2013, uh, when some people uh, who were opposed to gay marriage set up tents, not even barricades, just tents, near the French National Assembly, those tents were immediately taken away by the police. There was a famous case in London of an anti-war protester who after a long time was also removed from Parliament Square. Uh, the barricades in Kiev are far bigger than anything that was ever put up in London or Paris. And as your reporter has just said, and I thought that was a very interesting point he made about, as it were, revolutionary trials being conducted inside the barricades, the demonstrators have taken the law into their own hands. And no state in the world would allow that. And therefore it's entirely reasonable for the Ukrainian authorities to uh, uh, say that these barricades must be dismantled. Of course, people have the right to demonstrate, but they don't have the right to set up camp in the middle of the capital city and still less to take the law into their own hands. Right, uh, but uh, the protest we're seeing now reignited when Parliament passed anti-rallying <laughs> laws. They wouldn't allow masks or weapons during the protest. Aren't there similar laws in the EU? Of course there are. Uh, in France, it is forbidden to cover your face. You're not allowed to cover your face under any circumstances, not just during a demonstration. Uh, there's the famous law against the burqa, but that is, uh, uh, that is uh, in fact, uh, in a sense, a superfluous law because you're not allowed to go about in the street with your face covered. Uh, it's obvious that if anyone is wearing a mask, uh, and particularly a gas mask, they are, as it were, preparing for violent combat with police. And we've seen in these latest clashes, as we saw in December, uh, when the whole issue first erupted, how the demonstrators have initiated violence against the police and how the police in Ukraine have seemed to be almost powerless to resist them. I remember seeing a video from back in December, which I expect you showed as well, <coughs> showing the police without even shields. So uh, we can see that the violence has been initiated uh, in... Lo yes, carry on, please. We can see that the violence has been initiated in large measure uh, by the demonstrators themselves. And uh, once again, no self-respecting state, no state whose duty it is to uphold law and order, uh, can allow such things to continue, uh, particularly not in its capital city.
And uh, once again, how do you think authorities would act in any major European capital should riots start and protesters uh, start calling for revolution there? Well, as I've said, they would uh, do exactly what the Ukrainian authorities have done. Either they would have powers already uh, at their disposal to dismantle these barricades, uh, as they have in France, or if they didn't have them, as happened in Britain, uh, they would vote special powers uh, or particular powers or change the law in order to enable them to do so. Uh, of course, the right to demonstrate and to protest peacefully is protected and should be protected everywhere. But we're talking about something totally different in Kiev. We're talking about permanent barricades being set up. By people, we're talking about people who are taking the law into their own hands, as your reporter has said, preventing people from uh, walking along the street and going about their ordinary business. And above all, we're talking about demonstrators who have time and again showed their propensity to violence, following, as I say, the lead of their political parties, who themselves uh, either directly or indirectly advocate it. None of these things uh, would be permitted or are permitted in any democratic European state. John Lockland, author on international affairs, thank you very much indeed for your time. The riots in Kiev have highlighted a rise in nationalist movements and extremism, and uh, voice of Russia's political analyst Dmitry Babic believes opposition leaders are trying to cover up their radical side there. Klitschko and other so-called moderate nationalist leaders, although they are not moderate by European standards. First, they failed to sort of condemn uh, these actions of neo-Nazis. They failed to separate themselves from the neo-Nazis. Uh, uh, Sometimes they, they even denied that neo-Nazis were involved. They said these were all provocateurs from Yanukovych, you know, which was a blatant lie. We see now that uh, this is serious. I mean, how can Yanukovych burn his own buses and throw uh, Molotov cocktails at his own police? So these people were active from the very beginning, and it's a shame for the Western press not to notice them now, not to have noticed them in 2004 and 5, and to feed all of these lies to the Western public about civil society and about nice uh, Ukrainian liberals. They are, uh, uh, you know, these are not liberals, these are neo-Nazis.